Locked On Podcast Network and Odyssey present Locked On Sports Today. Celtics over the Warriors in the NBA Finals. That's according to seven-time champion Robert Ory. The Los Angeles Lakers have Darvin Ham in the head coach's seat and Russell Westbrook. He's not going anywhere. Plus, why we need to appreciate legends when we see them, even if they're on the other team. I'm Peter Bukowski, starting your day with the can't miss stories and biggest debates in sports. You're locked on sports today. Searching all major sports. Found. Let's start with the biggest story. The Golden State Warriors are minus 150, the favorites in the NBA Finals against the Boston Celtics. Joining me now, Robert Ory, seven-time NBA champion, is here courtesy of Bet Online. Check out Bet Online for all the up-to-date lines on the NBA Finals, Finals MVP, Finals props, and each and every game line. This is great to have you here. Why do you think, because the line has moved a little bit in, in the Celtics' favor, why do you think... There are people that like the Celtics matchup against the Warriors. Because the smart people know defense wins championships. Mm. And if you look at the Celtics team, they got two players on that team that made the all-defensive team. You know, smart, of course, defensive player of the year. But Robert Williams is one of those guys that is an eraser. He can block shots. He can, you know, you know, he can erase a lot of mistakes that you make on the perimeter. And you think about it, you got Brown, Tatum, and Smart who can get up on people defensively and funnel them to that guy. Next thing you know, is getting blocked. And if you look at the way, you know, Harford has been playing, he's turned back the hands of time. He's blocking <laughs> shots again. So if you, overall, I think that the, 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 the Celtics is a better defensive team than the Warriors because even though you have Draymond Green, Green Clay Thompson is not the Clay Thompson of old who can do the things he used to be able to do. And, and, and so I just think that's, that's a big key for them, for the Celtics, that is. How do you see defensive player of the year, Marcus Smart, matching up with, with Steph Curry? Is that going to be something where you see that Marcus is going to pick him up 94 feet? Like, how do you think Smart is going to approach that assignment if he does get that assignment, which we assume he's going to? But you know what? I don't think it's going to be a one-man job. If you look at the Celtics, they one, two, three are all athletic guys, and you go to the two, Jalen, and go to the Tatum, they get taller. You know, it's like, yeah. like the bars on the cell phone. And I think even, even though they like to do a lot of switching, I think they're, they're, they're perfect for this matchup. It's a perfect matchup for, for the Celtics and when they got the guard, then because you know Clay is going to be constant moving. And so, so, you know, not the same as a Jimmy Butler or Tyler Hero, but I think this, what they just did against the Heat, is like a, a, a prelude to a preclude to what they're going to do. And so I think they're going to be fine defensively switching and getting ready for Steph. It sounds like you like the Celtics in this one. You know, a lot of my Laker fans are going to be mad at me because they said you cannot <laughs> wear anything green. You can never root for the Celtics. I'm not rooting for the Celtics. You know, I, I would like to see my former teammate, Emil Duco, win his first championship. You know, so I would like for that to happen. But, you know, I just think being the basketball mindset, I just think that there, there's a good chance the Celtics could win this thing. All right, so we have some odds here. Celtics in six is plus 375. Celtics in seven is plus 650. If people are going to bet on it, what is what is your prediction if you like Boston? Six, seven? Hey, you know what? If you, you try to make some money, right? <laughs> that's, why you, that's why you gamble. And so I will go with the Celtics in seven because I think the Celtics have been a battle-tested team on the road. They've won a lot of games on the road. They just won the Eastern Conference on the road. And so I think they're ready. Not saying everybody would say, well, the, you know, the Heat is a different monster than, you know, the Warriors and all, blah, blah, blah. But I still think it all boils down to having confidence and playing well on the road and, and believing that you can win on the road. Thanks for making Locked On Sports today your first listen. We have an important favor to ask you. We put together a survey so we can learn more about our listeners like you and make your favorite Locked On podcasts even better. This is your opportunity to tell us what you like and don't like about Locked On Podcasts. Go to LockedOnPodcasts.com slash survey right now to get started. It won't take very long, and everyone that completes a survey can qualify for a chance to win one of 10 Ticketmaster gift cards, 100 bucks. Live music is back. Let's do this. To take our audience survey, go to LockedOnPodcasts.com slash survey. Thanks for your help. Coming up, Darvin Ham is the Lakers head coach, and Russell Westbrook isn't going anywhere. Is that the right move 
for the Lakers. Here's what to look for on Bet Online, your number one spot for all your daily gambling needs. Let's look at the odds for NBA Finals MVP. Steph Curry, 5 to 6. Jason Tatum, 3 to 2. Jalen Brown, 10 to 1. Clay Thompson, 12 to 1. Jordan Poole, 22 to 1. Draymond Green, 25 to 1. I like that one. Andrew Wiggins, 25 to 1. Marcus Smart, 40 to 1. Al Horford, 40 to 1. Bet Online, where the game starts. Yet another woman has joined the throng of accusers against Cleveland Browns quarterback Deshaun Watson, bringing the total to 23 women who have accused him of sexual misconduct. This 23rd civil case that was filed on Tuesday alleges Watson exposed himself to the woman at a massage parlor and repeatedly requested the woman to have sex with him while touching her. According to the lawsuit, the woman claimed she changed her mind about filing against Watson after watching HBO's Real Sports with Brian Gumbel, where two of the quarterback's accusers were interviewed. The lawsuit also states the woman brings this case seeking minimum compensation, but to obtain a court finding that Watson's conduct was wrong. Leah Graham, one of Watson's attorneys, told HBO that Watson has, quote, no regrets because he did nothing wrong. Dustin Johnson will headline the field for the inaugural Live Golf Invitational Series next week. A last-minute change in thinking over the last week, as the two-time major champion had originally said he was sticking with the PGA Tour. The 37-year-old Johnson will be one of the two top 20 ranked players in the field for the 54-hole tournament at the Centurion Golf Club outside of London, along with Louis Oosthuizen. There are 16 of the top 100 ranked players in the world at the event. The Live Golf Circuit is positioning itself as a direct competitor to the PGA Tour, and Johnson's inclusion in the tournament comes as a surprise after saying in February that he would not be part of the Saudi-backed Live Circuit. The NFL could be without one of its biggest stars in 2022. Aaron Donald said he'd be, quote, at peace with his career if he and the LA Rams can agree to a new contract. Donald has decided to return for 2022, provided he has a new deal. On the I Am Athlete podcast, Donald said, we've got to handle the business side of things, and if that wasn't to get handled, then, you know, it is what it is type of situation. I'll be fine regardless. Ever since Donald entered the NFL, he said he would play eight years and retire. Last season was his eighth season. And the Stanley Cup Western Conference Championship between the Edmonton Oilers and Colorado Avalanche got started off with a bang. The Colorado Avalanche take game one, and I think we were all expecting a high-scoring affair. Uh, maybe not like that. That The Avalanche win this thing 8-6. to six. And I think one thing that we've learned is that no lead in this series will be safe. The Avalanche were up seven to three in this game, and then were up seven to six. And it took a Gabe Landeskog empty net goal for Avalanche fans to really feel comfortable because it was, I won't say it was in free fall, but it was just the Oilers putting their offensive game together eventually and really starting to chip away at that Avalanche lead. The Avs had to do everything they could to hang on to this thing. That's what you're going to get in this series. And I don't know how comfortable you can get with Darcy Kemper also leaving the game with an apparent injury, with scoring going back and forth and to the limits it did. Pick your favorite Avs player. They probably scored, but you also <laughs> are walking out without your goalie. I mean, if you're a defenseman and if you're a goalie, what do you do? I genuinely don't know the answer to that. Both of these teams have an offensive arsenal that is just impossible to stop. So if you like offense, and if you're that casual hockey fan, uh, get into this series because eight to six might be the norm. But the Avs are now three victories away from punching their ticket to the Stanley Cup final. Game two is Thursday. I think you'll see a repeat of this. Uh, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't. Big moving news for the L.A. Lakers, a new head coach coming in and Russell Westbrook, maybe not packing his bags after all. Joining me now from Locked on Lakers, Andy Kamenetsky. Andy, the Lakers get a new head coach, Darvin Ham, the Ham Slamwich, the old Milwaukee Bucks slogan coming to Hollywood. What is the thinking here? What is the rationale for Darvin Ham in this spot? 
Um, I, I think it's a combination of he's had a reputation for a long time as a really good coach in the making. He's put in his dues with very good staffs, including the Milwaukee Bucks team that won a championship two years ago. He was part of some successful Hawks teams. He was actually part of the Lakers um, staff when Mike Brown was the coach. He might have actually been around a little bit for Mike D'Antoni as well. So there's some familiarity there, but he's just had a reputation for a long time as somebody who's a great communicator. I know from my experiences talking with him a little bit when he was with the team when I was covering it, he communicates things in a way that's very direct, very easy to understand. He managed to carve out an NBA career as an undrafted free agent. You know, he was part of the 2004 Pistons team that beat the Lakers in the finals. And he's just extremely well respected as somebody who knows the game extremely well, can relate to stars like a Giannis right down to the 15th guy on the bench. And just he's ready for this and combine that with there being no real marquee name out there that was, I think, realistically available. I think Darvin Ham was arguably the best name on the market. And I really think this was a good hire for, for the Lakers. You know, we'll see how it actually turns out. There's no template for Darvin Ham as a head coach. But I think this was a really good hire. And I think it was atypical for the Lakers in ways that are really positive. It's interesting, too. Taylor Jenkins, who was from that Mike Budenholzer tree in Milwaukee, has success in Memphis, too. Maybe brings a little bit more shine to a player on the staff like Darvin Ham and gives him an opportunity, not a player, a coach and gives him an opportunity here. But as you mentioned, a, a rising star in the coaching ranks. Let's talk about a star who is on the way down, a falling star, <laughs> if you will. Uh, Russell Westbrook uh, reports over the weekend that he is staying in L.A. There is a camp that says this is this is maybe even brinksmanship, not just gamesmanship from the Lakers, hoping that they can force a deal. Uh, and then there's another side saying, well, we, we're going we're gonna to trade him. Uh, what is your read on this situation? My read on this is that all things being equal, I think the Lakers and frankly, even Russell Westbrook would prefer that they could part ways. But realistically speaking, it's going to be very difficult for the Lakers to find a trade partner where they actually can get good players back or without having to just hemorrhage some of the few assets that they actually have left. The Lakers are a team with very little draft capital upcoming. They only have one young player of note in Taylor Horton Tucker. So they don't have much to work with in terms of avenues for improving a roster that needs a lot of uh, work beyond whatever comes of Russell Westbrook. And I'm sure they're trying to project, you know, a, a more I don't know, a more strategic narrative in, in terms of teams that they might look to deal with. They don't want to seem desperate, and this is what you do. But I, I think this is less about gamesmanship as it is them recognizing that they may not be able to find a deal that works, and they're just being pragmatic about the idea that if he's going to be on the roster next season, or at the very least we have to try with him on the roster to start things out, Let's tr let's figure out a way to make it work. It's the reason that they've asked all these different coaches that they've interviewed uh, about this. I and on, to some degree, I think this is actually them trying to brace fans for this. Like I I think it's actually them signaling a little bit. Hey guys, we hear you. We understand your concerns. We might not be able to meet them just yet. I love brownies, but you know what I love just as much as actual brownies, the batter. I mean, what is better than scraping with a spatula the bottom of that bowl or the beater and just getting that brownie batter? It's just, it's the, it's the, it's the cherry on top when you're making brownies. But what if you could get all of that great flavor and have it be something full of protein, something that you could feel good about putting in your body? That's the brownie batter puff. Brownie batter puff. This puff takes protein bars to a whole new level after built already up the game. 17 grams of protein, but just 140 calories. Plus, you have awesome collagen protein, which is easy for your body to absorb. It is all there for you. The flavor, the health benefits, it is a protein bar like 
nothing you have seen or tasted before. Go to built.com and use promo code LOCKS15 to get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCKS15 for 15% off at built.com. Connor McDavid and Nathan McKinnon, two of the NHL's best, squared off in Game 1 of the Stanley Cup Western Conference Championship last night. Brett Holden of Locked On Oilers and co-host Chris Maselli and Kyle Sullivan of Locked On Avalanche are reminded that legends should be appreciated no matter the team they play for. This is one of those things, like as a hockey fan, it doesn't matter what jersey you wear. Connor McDavid's one of those players that everyone, like you love to hate him because he's so good. And when your team is matched up against him, Knowing that we have like Nathan McKinnon, like you look forward to that matchup and what he's been able to do in the playoffs, like excites you. And like we mentioned with Canada behind you and everything going in to the the conference finals and with Colorado and getting past the second round, like this is one of those like sit down, pop your popcorn, McDavid, McKinnon. This is what you live for. And do you expect like it to billow or is this one of those things where this is alpha on alpha and they kind of cancel out (laughs) that's a good question i i I think the important maybe not important thing is but before we were even getting going here i think the thing that we kind of said was Connor McDavid's not from this world. Connor McDavid is a whole <laughs> other entity. When Nathan McKinnon, fantastic hockey player, and I will never not say that Nathan McKinnon is a, not a top three guy. He is, uh, if not right next to Connor McDavid, the the guy in the NHL. But he is the best hockey player, I would say, where Connor McDavid can just. The athleticism, athleticism, I should say, on him, the speed, the skill, just absolutely anything the kid can do, he does it at 115%. It is insane. So even if you were the best hockey player in the world, you can go and watch him and be, okay, never mind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. insane. It is I, insane. I've, I've gr- like – I've grown up as a, a fan of sports. When, when you're young, like, okay, I grew up like, and, and Michael Jordan was, you know, the greatest thing on a basketball court. And I hated him, <laughs> you know, growing up a, a Knicks fan. And, you know, the Knicks could never get past him. Right. But like, as you get older, you appreciate greatness. And, mm-hmm. and, and you, you, sh- you should be like thanking that you are alive at a time where someone like this exists and you can watch him play. I appreciate the take of appreciation. I really do. And I think it is important to say, okay, you're a great player. And even if I sports hate you, I appreciate your greatness. Here's what I'll say though. Villains are part of why we love sports. And when a player on the other team rips your heart out over and over and over again, sports hate, not real hate, not going on Twitter and threatening them, not that kind of stuff. I'm talking about sports hate, just, oh my God, every time that guy plays my team or that that woman plays my team, they kill my team. They destroy my team and I wish they wouldn't. I just, sports hate. Sports villainy is part of what makes sports so amazing. It's part of why rivalries are so great. Duke hates UNC. The Yankees hate the Red Sox. If you're a Red Sox fan, the only thing you need to know is that team is in pinstripes. And so, uh uh-uh. Aaron Judge, great player. Not today. I want you to go 0 for 4. If I'm a Red Sox fan, I can appre- I can appreciate your greatness by making you the villain of my sports universe, of my sports movie. Again, we're talking about healthy sports hate. I want to make that very clear. But villains are great for the sports. So yes, you can appreciate your opponent. Please do. But it's okay to go, man, that guy. I really wish my team were not playing his team. I really wish he would not be on that team. And you know who else thinks that and wishes that? The players. Dalvin Cook, in an interview this offseason, asked about where he thought Aaron Rodgers should play. He said, 
somewhere outside of the NFC North. He doesn't want to see that guy either. And either do Bears fans, Vikings fans, Lions fans. They could, they appreciate Aaron Rodgers' greatness by wishing he'd play somewhere else. That is wonderful. That is beautiful. That's what makes sports so compelling. There are heroes and there are villains. And every fan base has a different set of players. You appreciate greatness through villainizing your sports villains, your sports anti-heroes. As long as it's being done in a healthy, respectful way, it is a form of appreciation, and I support it 100%. And finally, after having lost five straight, Diana Taurasi had enough when she didn't get the call on a play where she absorbed hard contact from Candace Parker on a shot attempt. She immediately yelled at the referee who gave Taurasi a tech. That being more encouragement than deterrent, Tarazi persisted to berate the official who then tossed her with just under four minutes to play in the first half. The three-time WNBA champ and the 10-time WNBA All-Star finished the game with five points on two of six shooting. I don't care. She's the GOAT for me. I love Diana Tarazi. She can do no wrong. Get tossed, Diana. Talk that talk. That's fine. Thanks for making Locked On Sports today your first listen. Now make your second listen, Locked On NBA. From the first jump ball of the play-in tournament to the last possession of the finals, Locked On experts take you deep inside the playoffs with insight and analysis affecting all 30 teams. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. Coming up Thursday, who will win the NBA finals? We speculate wildly. So at least until tomorrow, stay Locked On Sports today. Locked On Podcast Network and Odyssey present... Locked On Sports Today.